Hi. Live from a studio in Los Angeles, she's back. It's Sara Z in La La Land with special guest, Wendy Starland. Thank you, boys. Gracias, Wendy. Ciao. <laughs> Singer, songwriter, music producer, honored by the Songwriters Hall of Fame, painter, model, and last but not least, she discovered and developed a girl who now goes by the name of Lady Gaga. Welcome to Hollywood. Thank you so much for having me. I love being here. Yeah, you look stunning. Actually, you look smashing. I just learned this word. Yes, <laughs> like you look smashing and dapper. Thank you. Thank you so much. As do you. You look gorgeous. I feel like you have good lighting. Maybe I've got to, I've got to move to better lighting here. You, well, for me, you look great. I think any light is good for you, but it's, it's a little bit cloudy today. But you're in Nashville, right? You are working yes. on an MTV show. Yes, yes. I'm working on a show for MTV. It's so exciting. It's called Project Supergroup. It's going to be the next big co music competition show. And it's all original music. So it's, you know, very much... Uh, you know, I would say it was sort of similar to the music competition shows out there like American Idol and whatnot, but it's different because um, there's a writer producer like myself assigned to one of the bands and we write and produce songs for these bands and they compete with original music. So it's much more like how the music business really is because Everybody is uh, constantly trying to make it, but they're not going to make it on cover songs. So this is a really, really different environment. And all music industry veterans are a part of this. So it's really exciting. And are you going to be when you're on, uh, as a, a judge? As so I am, I am writing songs. So um, I actually prefer <laughs> this position because um, I'm a songwriter and this really gets to show my abilities as a songwriter and um and record producer so i am writing songs so you are behind the scenes for this show you're behind no no I'm, or... I'm in front of the cameras so okay um, so you're go we're gonna see you we can yes see you. yes you'll okay. see me so the the songwriter producers are you know it's the concept is different than any other music competition show out there because in real life when there's an artist, nobody does it alone. Everybody has the team behind them, um, you know, helping to write the songs, making it like, you know, a finished master record. And so this is the opportunity for me to show what I do with various different artists and helping to develop them and create their sound and, and with these artists, everybody is from completely different backgrounds. They've never met each other before. So finding the common thread among all of the musicians and creating a sound for them um, and writing songs for them and with them, it's, it's just this awesome. This is fantastic. And probably you have to get to know them, their personality in order to really... Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you to create get to... a music with them, like you have to bond with them, like on not just on the business side, but also personally. And that has been the easiest part. I am in love with my band. They're incredible. So I'm, I'm feeling super grateful and uh, very excited. Yeah. How, how did you all, did everything start when with music because you wanted to focus on painting originally initially yeah. but then you I read it was very solitary you and your brush and your canvas so you decided to devote your heart into music yeah it was really one of those things where um you know I graduated from Cornell University and um, I went back to New York City where I'm from originally and I got a studio and I started while I was pursuing music at the same time I had this studio where I was earning a living as a painter and uh, I would you know basically get commissioned to make paintings for a lot of the executives in the music business so 
It was really, really cool. Um, that being said, and I love painting so much, that being said, it's a lot of very hard, detailed, focused work. And I much prefer to be in a more social environment where at the end, there's not just one copy, one painting sitting in either someone's house or in a gallery somewhere. There are, you know, many copies of music that you can put everywhere and you can share this. Um, I think the shared experience of connection is really special in in But uh, this is what this is great what what you, what you said that basically like thanks to uh the painting you discovered people in the music industry. So that was sometimes you know, we focus on one thing and we think that's not right, but instead it takes us to probably a better path. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. This is like that is it, it happened to me too I'm, without talking what happened, but I, I can feel you. And um, I, when we talked, we uh, we talked about Sir Daniel Veen. I don't know if he's live, but one yeah. of your paintings was at the Veen Gallery. Yeah, here I did it. I did. And I, yeah, yeah, I'm so sorry. I did an entire show um, at the uh, Winslaven Gallery on Rodeo Drive. Um, it was one of the most exciting experiences because during the pandemic, everything, you know, in the music business was closed. The um, studios were closed, the touring stopped, you know, people, uh, record labels, you know, were, everything was sort of at a standstill. And so it gave me the, the time actually to, you know, revisit painting and, um, you know, do something that I love to do. Um, and I ended up having a full gallery show there, which was amazing alongside Daniel Wynn and Salvador Dali. It was hosted by Forbes, um, which was a huge honor. Um, oh, it's, and a, it's a great gallery and I, I love Daniel. Actually, I did a live with him during the pandemic. If I only knew it, that you were there. I, I know. You should have been there. I mean, it was literally 1,000 people attended. 1,000 on Rodeo Drive. It was just one of these unbelievable experiences. So it was great. I mean, I, I am so grateful for that experience and hope to do a lot more. What was your, and, and while you do it, please call me. I want to meet you in person. Yes. <laughs> because now I'm hugging everyone. I'm hugging my phone every time. <laughs> <laughs> when I want to hug someone, you know, I like to meet people, my guests. Did you yeah. have any difficult moments in your career that you have to face and how did you overcome it? I mean, we've all had difficult moments in our career. I am no exception. Um, I, you know, there was a lot of difficult times. I mean, depending on which career we're talking about. I mean, mainly the music, music. business. But, um, you know, I think as an artist myself, uh, you know, you're only as good as your last record. You're only as good as your, um, you know, current status. And um, basically, I feel like I've put out consistently good work either for myself or other artists over the years and um i feel like i've you know there were many you know times where i felt like i had to prove myself to people um unnecessarily who didn't even know me and whatnot and so uh, which that way was how, did, how, how did you have to prove yourself? you know to prove to prove my talent to prove my ability to prove what I've achieved and um, and that was that was hard and aggravating because you know parts of your history that you've worked so hard on you're not gonna I mean it's like telling you you know that you're not Italian <laughs> you know what I mean it's just like it's who you are so I am I am uh, I am Italian <laughs> <laughs> But you know, 
So it, it's literally, it's, you know, a very strange feeling when, you know, people are, you know, if anyone's doubting you on who you are, what you've achieved and what you've um, worked so hard on for years. So I overcame it by A, not giving a shit, <laughs> just not caring. And B, uh, you know, just keep, when you keep at it and you keep your head down, stay humble and do your best work. Like that's all you can do in life. Like all you want to do is be the best version of yourself. And I strive to do that every day. Is there a specific quality, especially in the music industry that you need to have and that you have like what you said, like keep focusing on yourself, but something that really keep you grounded? Like, yeah, I mean, I would say that, um, you know, if like, one thing I said to Lady Gaga was only take advice from someone that you admire in the category that you're trying to get advice on so for example you know if you're like you know i may not take fashion advice from snooki <laughs> you know i i you know if i'm gonna take uh business advice it's probably not gonna be from my parents who have had nothing to do with my career or don't know anything about the music business it's going to be from somebody who I would want to trade places with somebody who has achieved what I'm trying to achieve. And so it's very important to just listen to your inner voice and obviously be open to outside constructive criticism, but do it with people that you would gladly trade places with. And you, yes, you get the inspiration. Same like I, Every time when I, I, I'm in doubt and I like to talk to my dad, and sometimes I do, I talk to my parents. Oh, I'm writing this, I'm writing. And my dad, uh, okay, how was your day? What did you eat? And All right. I'm just telling you <laughs> that I'm trying, you know, my, cre my endeavors, my cre creative endeavors, like to keep going. But what you just said, like, you have to talk to people who are in the business, you can get the inspiration from. And you mentioned Lady Gaga, so why not start talking about how you discovered her? I'm sure a lot of people yeah. know her, but how so, did you, you know, I discovered and developed Lady Gaga while um, I was simultaneously, um, you know, I'm a songwriter, so I have over 2,000 recorded songs. It's quite a lot. So basically, uh, Famous Music Publishing is Viacom's publishing company. And they wanted to, they were interested in pursuing a publishing deal with me. And uh, the intern for um, Erwin Robinson, who was the head of the company, the president, or CEO, he had, you know, a secretary who was a girl named Stephanie Germanata. And every time oh, I passed, passed her desk, she was, you know, I had my music coming out of her speakers for the MySpace. And, you know, she was so very, very nice. And, um, and in this simultaneously, I'd been working with a multi-platinum producer, um, we had been writing an album or, you know, several different records. Uh, and I was to go out and find an artist who could perform these songs and uh, and we could write new songs with and, and whatnot. And so I'd gone to over 50 shows and um, I was looking for something very specific. And you were looking for the female version of the guy of, of, of the singer from the strokes right the band the strokes. that's right the producer that's right. wanted the female version of 
that person, that uh, artist. That's right. Yeah. And when, and sorry, when if I interrupt you, but when you were meeting Lady Gaga as a secretary, she was already singing and doing showcases. She Did was, you? yes, she was, but um, she had a very different style of music, very different. So it was much more like, I'd say I'd compare it to sort of Fiona Apple, um, you know, much more acoustic, uh, you know, much, just very, very different. Nothing, nothing like the songs that you hear her singing now. And so uh, she was open, we were, we were performing on the same bill at a place called The Cutting Room. And she came up to me during soundcheck and said, hi, Wendy, do you remember me? Stephanie Germanotta from Irwin Robinson's office. Do you remember me? And I said, yes, of course. So nice to see you. She said, oh, you know, we're performing on the same bill tonight. It would be great if you could, you know, check out my show. I said, wonderful. I'll be there. And in the meantime, I was looking for this Strokes girl. And so when I saw her perform, she had, and, you know, at that point, I didn't even realize that she was a singer. I just, uh, because I had just seen her at the office, so checked her out. Never under you. underestimate people like secretaries or who's behind the desk because, especially in LA, you know, in places where the entertainment is so powerful uh, and everyone has always like dreams, like have regular job, but they are working on on, exactly. on, on writing or music and, and this, this story I, I didn't know is fabulous like <laughs> story. so you listen to her singing and then what do you do so I listened to her singing and I went up to her afterwards and I told her that she had huge balls <laughs> I was like you are you're such a incredibly you know confident performer and Basically, um, I said, how attached are you to this band? She said, well, my boyfriend's in the band. <laughs> and I said, how attached are you to this band? And so basically she said, why? I said, I've been writing, you know, an al a record with a multi-platinum producer. You know, I've been searching for a specific kind of singer. And I think I could make you into the biggest star in the world. But there's gonna you know it's not gonna be the songs that you're singing now and it's not gonna be the same style and it's and we're gonna change your name we're gonna change clothes we're gonna change everything and that is exactly what happened i i took her outside it took some time until my uh the producer i was working with accepted her um he didn't see it very quickly and it took some time. And then after that, we were able to uh, have her sing a cappella at his studio. And that's when he got it. That's when he got it. And so it took months and then it took years to create the sound, the the costumes, the person, you know, the whole because the costume, yeah. By the way, this the costumes were um, by the a great fashion designer I love, um, Alexander McQueen. So, those flamboyant costumes were planned. Like, did you think about what kind of fashion designer could fit her persona? Did, oh, did I mean, we thought on? about every la every last detail was thought about. I mean, this was definitely every last part, every, you know, that's what this is. This work is detailed work. And you have to be very um, detail oriented if you want to win in this business because everybody's, you know, who's going to outwork me? Nobody, <laughs> you know, it's going to take somebody who really understands what it, that people are, um, they have a very short attention span. Um, they're, you know, music 
used to be something that people paid for and it's something that they no longer pay for. So the executives at the labels are in a position to lose their jobs uh, very quickly if they do not produce a hit. And so they're much less likely to take risks on a new sound and a new image. And that's, everyone was telling me, Wendy, you're crazy. You know, just this girl is all dressed up like this, you know, bring her into my office. There's no dance music on the radio. And so. No, she I, definitely stood out <laughs> for sure. Like, you among stood all the art, like she was very, but also it's not just that, that she knew how to portray herself with those costumes because mm -hmm. it has to be a good fit. Not everyone with those costumes, probably, that's my humble opinion, like would, would be comfortable in, in, with this transformation of themselves. But she was like really a performer. Yeah. It's truly um, an actress as well. Like she is an amazing actress. And as we've seen on the silver screen, she's just, um, She's a very creative soul and she's able to step into, you know, any character. It's really awesome. Did you, uh, or better, are you still going to showcase, not for Lady Gaga now, but for other artists? Do you still yeah. find talent and develop them? Yes. Well, I would say this show that I'm working on right now is the context in which I'm doing that. I mean, this show for MTV, you're going to see it's all it's all the same kind of work that I was doing um, previously. So this is, you know, writing, producing, coming up with the name. It's, it's taking something from zero to hero. And it's really exciting. These people are so talented and grateful for the experience. And um, they can all you know write songs and play instruments and sing it's like it's a very very um incredible you'll see this this show thank is you for, thank you wendy for for doing this and discovering tan and actually also for sharing the story about how lady gaga name was born because a lot of people see the final product instead there's there's a lot of work behind, like with showcase, with a shirt and a jeans and just her voice. And here you are like seeing her, you had a keen eye for that talent and say this person can become someone. Even though sometimes success is very unpredictable, I don't know if you can really, uh, if, if you can, or if you do know if that person is gonna be successful for sure. I think there's a margin of, doubts well it takes it takes a village it takes so many people there's not one person who can make lady gaga or anybody else successful it takes a number of people to make that happen it takes you know or for any artist it's songwriting it's production quality it's consistency of the voice and the performance it's how much money the record label is going to put into promoting you so that's not just you're on itunes you're on the cover of itunes or you know the best spotify playlist or um how you're going to get on you know all of these things it's very important to understand the process your manager has to you know once you make money, collecting the money. I mean, there's, there's, it's a very long, hard process. Your agent has to, you know, book the tours. You got to get, you know, become the opening act on the right tour with a crossover audience who is going to appreciate you. I mean, I can't tell you how many things have to go right for it to work, um, but it takes talent is obvious but luck is not obvious and you've got to just hope for the best it's all the work behind it i'm not in the music industry i was more in the dancing industry but i i can imagine uh all the steps that needs to be taken 
uh, for especially having so many minds all together, so many brains and ideas and creative minds to make that one person yeah. like successful. And you, you also worked in Italy. Yeah. Did, did, you, did, you, did you sing? Did you model in Italy? Or I was, where are you? I was, I was mainly painting while I was in Italy, actually. So I, um, I studied at Cornell University and I, I took um, a long semester abroad. So I was at there for the summer, the semester and over the Christmas break. So it was like eight months. I lived in Trastevere. Um, it was so out there and um, I love Rome. I love that there's art and a masterpiece around every corner. I mean, Italians live the best life. They're food, the best fashion, the best, you know, lifestyle. And the people are so warm and beautiful. And you've been to Milan too. I saw some, some posts on, on your Instagram account. Did you go to Milan? So I had been modeling um, this past year, I was so lucky. I got to model in um, Milan Fashion Week for Sima Collection. Um, I also got to model in Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, and Abu Dhabi. Um, Forbes had a fashion show uh, for International Women's Day where um, Tyra Banks and Paulina Parskova, I got to walk alongside the most iconic supermodels. It was just truly phenomenal. Bellissimo. Hey, but what do you do to recharge your battery, Wani? Because you're doing so many different, you're wearing different hats. I am. I, I would say, you know, I love warm weather. I love anything warm. I love... <laughs> do you relax? Do you do something to really relax and take the time for you that is outside of business? Um, you know, I just love spending time with, you know, my friends, my, you know, the people that I love the most. And I think that that to me is relaxing. I mean, to be honest, I've had, I can't even remember the last time I had a day off. <laughs> you know, I, I'm literally all weekend I was in the studio working and, I, I love my work. I'm passionate about it. So I'm constantly working. But now in particular is probably the busiest I've been ever. <laughs> which, I, which is good and great considering the time we're living in COVID and now we are in the after COVID, but still things are slowly. Yes, like, things yes. are so good. Um, you know, we're in Nashville here, uh, and I'm getting to work at the Musicians Hall of Fame and doing some incredible, incredible shows and just very exciting stuff. So I got you. Basically, your 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 way of relaxing is working. <laughs> it's still working well, because I, it's, you're you're an artist. Like we feel comfortable when we do things instead of well, meditation can help. Yoga. <laughs> Yeah, I do some meditation for sure. Um, Pure, this Pure app, P-U-U-R, is something that I'm very into. But also, you know, again, just spending time with friends, being in nature, being, you know, outside, feeling the sun on my shoulders, very simple things. I don't, I don't have like, um, you know, a specific thing that I go to, but I would say just being around the people I love. Are you gonna have another exhibition with your paintings here in LA? Are you gonna? Hope so, you know, yeah. because this week, um, a gallery owner called me about that. And I said, well, I'm not gonna really be back in LA till, you know, next year. <laughs> so. Oh, okay, so next year I won't be able to see you then. Otherwise, if you were here, I would have a, co a cappuccino, a good cappuccino, Italian, or cap espresso macchiato, un espresso yeah. macchiato. Would you like to say something in Italian, maybe a, an inspirational quote or just 
a phrase in Italian that you remember from the time you were there? <laughs> well, I don't, I literally am so terrible with languages. I don't know how to speak Italian, but I can tell you um, an inspirational quote that I've always loved and maybe you can translate it for me. Oh but yeah, if I'm prepared, yeah. Tell me, <laughs> hopefully I know how to translate it, yeah. <laughs> so there's a quote I love called, uh, saying, fall down seven times, stand up eight. Wait, wait, fall down? Fall down seven times. Seven times. Seven times, stand up eight. Yeah, so cadi, cadi per sette volte, ma rialzati per otto. Got it. <laughs> okay. Like fall, yeah, fall down like seven times and then stand up, get up eight times. Yeah, I love that because resilience is the number one characteristics you need in the music industry. Um, you really, and in any field, I mean, resilience is the most important thing because the world is a rough place and it's going to knock you around a little bit and people, not everyone is going to have the best intentions for you. But if you just hold the best intentions for yourself and say, I'm not going to let anything get me down. I'm going to stay true to myself and pick myself up, be the best version of myself and be, then you're winning. And that's what that quote means to me. Those are precious words. Sono parole preziose. E tu sei bravissima, bellissima. E grazie per aver condiviso la tua storia. Thanks for having shared your story with me. And thank you to everyone. Grazie a tutti per averci ascoltato. Thanks to everyone who listened to us. Thank, thank you, you for so your much. time, Wendy. Grazie per il tuo tempo. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Grazie mille. Un bacione. Ciao, Wendy. Ciao. Ciao.